So, this uh, session is basically a revision session or session where there are some doubts which people have raised and so we should take some time to clear those doubts. So, we call that a clarification <coughs> session. So, this was a question which says that why the same molecule wants to be in a crystalline phase as well as in a disoriented phase. So, obviously, the thing that we should be always aware is that this is going to be always holding good. And thermodynamically, if delta S increases, it is also favorable if delta E decreases, this is also favorable. So, these are the two things which if happen, uh, we would be getting a more stable state which we call as setting. And so, this is if we consider delta E, then we are looking at this as if being represented by crystallization. And this, as we said, is like entropy, so disorientation. So, all the molecules generally would like to disorient, will remain in a disorganized fashion, increase the entropy of the system. And so, that will be considered as a stable state. So, any molecule polymeric or otherwise, if it goes into a disoriented state, will be considered as a more stable state. Because that means, you have a complete freedom for movement, orientation and anything else that the molecule may like to do at a certain temperature conditions. On the other hand, when we talk about crystallization, what we are saying is that every atom in the molecule has found a specific place in a three dimensional space, which is completely ordered and that is what reflects the crystallization. So, more is the crystallization, more is the setting. That means, more release of energy has taken place. Similarly, if more orientation takes place, then also it is release of energy that is delta G is going to become negative. So, both are good. So, the question that remains was why a same molecule which is let us say polyester would like to be in a crystalline phase as also in a disoriented phase because these two are almost opposite as far as the nature is concerned. All right. In this, we had discussed one interesting curve, which is the energy versus distance between the atoms. And this curve had a shape approximately of this type. That is, when the distance between the two atoms to begin with are quite far, if the atoms are far and distance is more, then the energy is approximately 0. So, they would like to remain in as far as the potential internal energy is concerned, they would be happy wherever they are. But when the distance becomes less than, let us say, a certain amount, certain value, then it will follow this particular curve and would like to take a position as at wherever the energy is the lowest. 
And why this happens also we said that there are forces of attraction between any two particles, there is a force of attraction which brings them closer and it comes to a position where the forces of repulsion become more predominant. Let us say there is an electron moving all around, so negative, negative repulsion and so immediately the energy level rises. So obviously there is a well and so people would like to be there. But only if the distance is less than a certain value. If it is more, they would like to have more freedom. This is a freedom region. This is an ordered region. So, if you do a drawing kind of a process, that means you are pulling molecules, forcing them to come close or any other input that you give, mechanical, thermal or even chemical input. If there is a possibility of atoms of the molecules coming closer than this, then they would automatically love to be in this position, so this distance. Therefore, you have the distance between hydrogen and hydrogen atom, carbon, carbon atom, carbon, nitrogen atom, carbon, hydrogen atom, they are fixed distances, they are not arbitrary. All right. So, if by any of your operations, whether heat setting, stresses like drawing, you can bring the atoms closer, once you make them closer, then it becomes, this process is facilitated. Otherwise, they will like to remain in a random configuration. When they come to a state where which is near, then there is possibly they may like to come closer to each other, fold on each other and make a crystalline region. Does it make some sense? There was also something on the non-thermoplastic yarn. So, because we had said in the last few lectures that we shall be discussing fully drawn thermoplastic yarns and thermomechanical texturing. So, this question relates to thermoset or you say non-thermoplastic fibers and what would you like to do to achieve texturing, all right. You want texturing of a non-thermoplastic yarn. So, what is likely to be the process? So, one of the processes that can be used even for non-thermoplastics is release of energy. So, there is a release of energy. For example, if you have cellulosic material, if you know the cotton can be dissolved in cupram ammonium hydroxide solution and so there are many inorganic organic compounds which can do a bit of a decrystallization and a recrystallization. We said it is a partial melting and recrystallization. If you use solvents, so you can probably say, some people use this word also, decrystallization, so some partial decrystallization and then recrystallization. So, what you can do? Twist the yarn based on the approximate formula that you have and then submerge the twisted yarn in a solvent. For a certain period of time, 
and a certain temperature. Some of them may work at room temperature. For some, you may have to raise temperature a little bit. But during that submersion where the solvent is going to diffuse inside the fiber, what will happen is exactly same as we were expecting breakage of intermolecular bonds. When you say some there is a solvent which is dissolved, what is the dissolution? Breakage of intermolecular bonds. So, we are only saying decrystallization, also partial decrystallization. It is not that you want to dissolve them completely, therefore, like you do not want to melt a fiber. Therefore, you will be choosing concentrations and solvent such a way that there is enough mobility introduced but not complete dissolution. If there is no fiber, there is no texturing. So, you can use release of energy mechanism also by using some solvent. Okay. So, cellulosics can be for example, I have given something, but thermoplastic material also can be texturized by a solvent process. Because there again decrystallization, recrystallization can take place. Like we said, the recrystallization takes place during heating also. So, during solvent uptake, when the solvent is diffusing in, also recrystallization will take place. And when you remove the solvent, of course, you will have to remove the solvent like you remove the heat. So, you will do whatever processes have to be done, so that remove the solvent. When you remove the solvent, it will go back to the same process as the recrystallization and stabilization. So, all the three things which you require for setting can be done by solvents also. So, whether it is a normal thermoplastic fiber or a thermoplastic fiber, any polymeric material can also be generally you can find a suitable solvent which may only do plasticization and not dissolution. So, if 100 percent concentration dissolves, you reduce the concentration, add something like a non-solvent and suddenly you will find that it will do the plasticization more than the dissolution. But it must go through the same process called the decrystallization, recrystallization process. So, solvent uptake and solvent removal like you heat and cool. So, as far as the solvent texturing for the non-thermoplastic and thermoplastic yarn is concerned, we just seen it can be used. All right. So, so one part is satisfying the answer to the question which was there before. The other thing which can be done by the non-thermoplastic material is stabilization by freezing, not by release of energy. For example, you can use cross-linking agent for intermolecular cross-linking. Like for example, cellulose you use DMDHEU, it is a bifunctional cross linking agent, or you can use trifunctional crossing agent or hexafunctional cross link agent. But you can appreciate if you have more cross link by a same molecule, the final structure is going to become more and more rigid, like you have bakelite. It is a cross linked structure, but three dimensional cross linked structure or melamine formaldehyde cross link. So, you have various types of sheets that you generate which are very rigid. So, most probably you will be happy with a bifunctional agent. So, 
a bifunctional cross linking agent. If you use some such agents, then we can term this texturing as chemomechanical texturing, like we talked about the other one as thermomechanical texturing, because you are now using some amount of a chemical to do the job. And what is the principle of freezing? That once you put additional cross links, so whichever configuration that you have decided for yourself will be frozen. So what you do? You twist. After twisting, you go through a process where bifunctional agents are used and intermolecular cross-linking can be done. If that happens, then they will remain in a twisted configuration. When you untwist, they will like to go back to the twisted configuration. Right? So, non-thermoplastics can also be used, can also be texturized by either mechanism of freezing, freezing or release of energy. One question which was also there was what was solvent assisted texturing. So, it is something like a solvent texturing only, assisted means only thing that one can think is well instead of going for a temperature which is very high, you go for a lower temperature, so you get assisted. And why will this type of a process be used? Because you may find that the material actually is a thermoplastic, but if you go to a very high temperature, losses are more than the gains. Okay. In that case, you say, well, we can't work at high temperature. If you don't work at high temperature, all the thing that you want to do will not be done. What will not be done? Partial melting will not happen. Reorganization, recrystallization will not take place. And so, you would need assistance. So, when let us say you have a material like acetate, triacetate, so if you also use some solvent, you find that instead of going to very high temperature, at half that temperature, you can do the job. And at that temperature, the degradation will not take place, but it will be assisted. All right. So, you will still require some temperature which has to be optimized. You will require certain amount of solvent which has to be absorbed, adsorbed, diffused. So, processes can be designed as a batch process. Processes can be designed continuous also, but then you have to take care. Whenever you use solvent, and you want to evaporate solvent at high temperatures, depending on which solvent are we talking about, if it is an organic solvent, you always have a danger of fire and of course, vapors going everywhere else. In that case, you will have to have a closed systems where if the solvents vaporize, you are able to collect them, condense them and hopefully reuse them. All right. So, you will not like the solvents to go out. Process control parameters, obviously anything that you use, what concentration of a solvent that you have used, obviously its boiling points will decide as to how much temperature can you go. So, time, temperature, tension, twist, all of them are going to be there. In addition, you have a chemical which also has to have a concentration and uptake. So, if you give less time, Diffusion will be slow. If somebody wants to measure the time of diffusion or uptake of the solvent, which means so many grams per gram or milligrams per gram, then it will be very slow process. 
then it will take up time and then after some time it may take up a shape like this. No more diffusion, no more uptake. But this is the time when initially there is a resistance to penetration. So there will be time which will be required for penetration, diffusion and then it will make space and the solvent will go up and if you are changing any property then it will go and after that some time a particular solvent also there may be spaces are not there so it will the rate of absorption will also go down all right unless and until it is a solvent which can dissolve then there is no uptake left you know everything will be in the solvent and not solvent in the solid as long as your concentrations are such which are not destroying the fiber structure then you are talking about uptake all right and the properties of the yarn produced by this process well we are obviously interested in texturing so if you have properly done the thing that means time temperatures have been taken care of twist has been taken care of tensions have been taken care of optimized based on this process whatever you have done optimization for thermal process for the same fiber will obviously not be applicable in this situation you will have a different parameter and finally crimpidity could be the same as long as you can guarantee that by partial melting or partial dissolution or a decrystallization recrystallization process again gives you the same amount of crystallinity if that happens then you can say well the properties will be same some of things can be changed for example if because of the solvent absorption and diffusion some of the oligomers may also come out oligomers then maybe you are creating some more space so maybe diuptake can increase but tensile properties will go down because his texturing disorientation has taken place crimpidity should increase and so you should be happy the advantage with all these processes could be that you can actually if you go by this process you may actually theoretically take a spun yarn also and do the same thing all right but when you take a spun yarn if you twist more than what the twist level it can say you can break fibers if you untwist too much then you will have fibers separated out you will not be yarn so instead of that people may take more than one yarn make a ply yarn give a ply twist and then ply and twist and you will still get it and so you can get properties which you want which are the thermoplastic yarns which are not suitable for thermomechanical texturing any name that you want to give yes we said acetate try acetate and acrylonitrile or acrylic acrylic fibers so these are the textile grade material which otherwise are thermoplastic but you would like some assistance if you want that kind of a process or go completely solvent texturing solvent assisted or solvent texturing can be used one question which related to somebody is asked that why low tension is used for winding the yarn during texturing so why this i hope what you meant was during the secondary heated treatment for the facilitating secondary heated treatment when you are only giving primary heated treatment and making a stretch yarn and not going for a modified stretch yarn there is no real need for reducing the tension of the package 
right? There is no need because 0 0.1 gram per denier can completely remove the crimp. And who would want to add tension of 5 gram per denier? Nobody. So, your tension is only so that the package is good enough and does not slough off. So, you will be able to do that. So, if you are not interested in going for a modified stretch yarn, so your tension, winding tension could be normal tension, all right. If you are also wanting to know as to why this pint thing is done, but there is something called a temporary set and we did talk about this temporary set as a minima at A compared to B, the minimum at A is also a minimum, but at a higher energy level than the minimum at B. So, for example, if you have wound your package under normal tension, normal winding tension, let us say a nylon textured yarn. So, on the package there is no crimp, you appreciate that? Because that is the smaller tension is not good enough to remove the crimp. And then you store this material and if it is as I said nylon in the moisture which is generally there, there can be some mobility because the glass tension temperature in a wet state or a moist state and nylon can go down very low. And you have seen that earlier curve that there is possibility of mobility above the grass tension temperature, howsoever less, it is not 0. So, if you actually take a nylon textured yarn, normal winding, keep it for let us say 3 months, you did not need it and then you open, you might find that it is opening as if it is a normal multifilament yarn without any crimp, right because it has somehow gone to this state, it has not been able to go, it was here, but because you have kept it in a stressed condition, not really stressed, but crimped open and then stored for a long period, where some possibility was also there that you can have some molecular rearrangement, howsoever small. It may not be having crystallization, but it may have disorientation, which also is setting, isn't it? In fact, people have found the other thing also in the case of nylon. If you instead of giving very normal tension, you give let us say double the tension or triple the tension and wind it and then keep it in the package, normal untextured yarn also, you might find that the modulus etc. change because some molecular arrangement is taking place even at room temperature because you have ensured that the glass tension temperature goes below, All right? So, some properties can change also. So, that is the temporary set, but in case we get this kind of set in textured yarn, the testing method has suggested either you go for a hot environment, all this will come back. So, by either solvent or by temperature you can overcome this barrier, energy barrier, then this material will come here and then you can see there is a textured yarn still exists, all right. So, if that question meant that to be answered, this is the answer. What is the principle behind the formation of a modified stretch yarn? How the stretch of 100 to 150 percent is achieved in such yarns? Well, whatever details. So, the process of modified stretch yarn meant you are first making a stretch yarn and then modifying it. So, if we make first stretch yarn, then you are expecting in an ideal situation 350 or more percent of stretch is going to be there. So, you are only supposed to reduce the stretch. When you say modify stretch, we are reducing.
reducing the stretch to whichever level that you want. I can make it zero stretch. I fully extend the yarn and reheat. And if I reheat to the same temperature, the temperature at which we had textured, everything will be finished. There will be nothing like a crease, you put it on the thing at the same temperature, the crease can go. It is a reversible process because partial melting, recrystallization, full melting, everything can take place. So, it is a temperature dependent phenomena and condition at which you are doing this process. So, what are we doing? We are having a secondary heater or another autoclave where the temperatures are lower than the primary heater temperature. That means, you do not want to wash off completely what you did before, that is one part. But 15, 20 degrees also quite above the temperature where partial melting can take place. So, all such entities within the fiber which can respond to this thermal input, they will respond. And so, there will be molecular rearrangement again. But in a configuration, in a geometrical configuration, which is different than when you actually did the texturing. And how is it different? Different is in what we call as limited extension or limited relaxation. If it is a fully relaxed state, then I am giving some extension and reheating. Let us say this is fully relaxed state. So, I give extension. So, this can become this fully extended or this can be extended in this manner up to this point. If I am efficient enough, I fully extend the material and then heat and heat also to the same temperature, you will get a flat yarn. If I do the this part limited extension, okay. if I do limited extension, then and also use temperatures which are lower, there will be change, but a new configuration is the one which you are trying to set. It is still helical while you are setting, it is not fully extended. And so, if this structure becomes stable, then you want to fully extend, it can go up to this point only. because the main length of the yarn has not changed, not significantly. And so, when you measure the crimpity, this will be the recovery, recovery will be this and not this. So, crimpity will go down because a new structure has been stabilized. So, that is how the modified stretch yarns are produced. Some question about the diameter of helix, etc. Is the crimp rigidity and setting are they linked? Yes or no? So, they are linked because the bet, better set means more crystallization, more disorientation, favorable, and that means setting, that means crimp rigidity. Crimp rigidity also is related to stretch potential that which we have measured. And so, in some sense, setting crimpity stretch potential are linked. 
So more is the setting, better is the setting, stretch potential is going to be high, crimp is going to be high. Then there was a question related to larger diameter helix versus smaller diameter helix. Which one will give you higher stretch potential? You see there is, if this is the situation versus this is the situation, when you want to open the crimp, what are you doing? You are doing at least we can call it unbending. unbending. So, in which case I want to open up by pulling unbending stresses will be more. Everything wants to remain in its position because you have set it. You want to make it flat. In which case the unbending stress would be more where the curvature is more, where it is more curved or radius of curvature is less. Why? Because in a let us say one single filament which has got a curve like this, compressive forces, extensive forces are the ones which have been in a way released. All these stresses were released during texturing. Now, you want to do the reverse. So, you have to do unbending and therefore, this must expand, inner thing must expand, outer must compress. Now, the more is the difference between them and the more is this stress difference, the more you have to apply additional stress. So, in a larger diameter, the curvature, radius of curvature is large, but the curvature is small. So, you do not have to do too much of unbending and therefore, you have to apply less stress and therefore, less stretch potential and therefore, it can give you less crimp rigidity. Make sense? This question was also there, why does not the yarn become stiff after twist set and detwist process? We have seen in textile finishing lab that after we expose the fabric to high temperature, you got a stiff yarn, but here extensibility of the yarn increases. First question which has to be answered is, does it become stiff? Do you believe that the modulus of the yarn, the fiber is going to increase if your crystallinity increases? Yes or no? So, in that sense it will become stiff. So, whether you do texturing or you do not do any texturing. If your modulus increases, that is stiffness, but the problem is the definition of extensibility. Extensibility versus stretchability, they are two different terms. So, our textured yarn behaves like this. If you are looking at a modulus here, fully decrimped yarn, so the modulus of the decrimped yarn will change. And if more crystallization, let us say 15 percent crystallization or 5 percent crystallization to 50 percent crystallization take, you will see stiffness will increase. But this is a different story. This is a stretchability, it has nothing to do with that modulus. It has something to do with the modulus, but what we call as extension increasing is we have created a structure like a helical structure which is helping this. When this you look at the decrimping zone from here to here, complete decrimping zone, yarn has not extended. The length of the yarn is same, it is only unbent. So, the stress that is there is an unbending. This is a low deformation phenomena, not a high deformation phenomena. There is hardly any deformation. 
from the length point of view, just unbending deformation. And therefore, this has to be differentiated with the normal extension at break. And so, when if you are looking at this being very you know low uh, stress condition, it extends quite a lot. Yes, it does because only crimps are opening which are only taking care of the unbending part of it and not stretching the yarn, not extending the yarn in length. And therefore, you see a lot of extension. I hope this is what was the question which was intended. And uh, high bulk yarns by differential shrinkage principle. So, you have two fibers, generally it is a staple fiber environment. One of them shrinks quite a lot, quite a lot means 30 percent or more actually when you heat. Other one is close to 0. So, difference between the shrinkage that is one part. Polyester high bulk yarns are not easily available in the market. Why? because it is very difficult to produce polyester yarns with such large difference of shrinkage because the moment you stretch, draw, heat, polyester crystallizes immediately. Crystallization means stability, stability means no shrinkage. We are lucky, the acrylic fibers do not crystallized the way the polyester does or the way nylon does or the way polypropylene does. It goes to a meta stable state and what we have said is it in a way freezes amorphous orientation. freezing of the amorphous orientation without crystallization. So, when you are oriented structure, if you give a chance, it shrinks like all textile fibers. But in between, if you have done crystallization, it does not shrink. In normal state, I do not want my shirt to be shrinking 30 percent in everywhere, right. So, I do crystallization for stabilization. But this is thing I can do it is possible in the acrylic fibers to have amorphous orientation frozen and also go further heat setting to make sure that this orientation also in a way go to meta crystallization form which does not then shrink. So, you can make two types of fibers because it's got high polar nitrile group all over the molecule. And so, that polar polar attraction is good enough to get to the amorphous orientation freezing and so it can shrink and therefore, you can produce such yarns. I think for today it is ok. Next time when we meet for this type of a session, we will have more questions and doubts later.